And hello, each and every one of you. Greetings from far north Australia, where I'm broadcasting from. Uh, my name is Alexis Sersha, and I welcome each and every one of you to this safe space, to this round table. Um, we had a beautiful morning this morning. It is morning here. Um, and uh, it, we've got quite a cloudless skies at the moment, and there was a crescent moon. When I got up, it was still dark with Jupiter, and then um, very beautiful pink sunrise. So now the birds are, have done their morning singing, and they're out and about busily everywhere. Birds are quite loud here. We do have quite a lot of birds, and I love that because you can hear them all through. Like if, even if you wake up in the middle of the night, there are all sorts of birds that you can hear, the night birds, and then during the day. Um, and they're just so full of life and so um, joyful all the time. It's just they're beautiful to have. So we're just waiting for a few more people to, to join us here live. And Let's take a deep, deep, deep breath and come here into this now moment, into this now space to have a bit of respite from all of the things that are happening in the world. And for many of us, you know, despite of what is going on in the world, it is actually all perfect because we are going through our own insights, our own integrations, our own realizations. And for some of us, it is the best time of our lives because this year, the energies are really moving and, and think like manifestation is happening so quickly. And things are really moving and changing for, for us. So it's like when sometimes perhaps if you look at the news at what the mass consciousness is doing, it is like a completely different planet. And within that space, that space that we each and every one of us create for ourselves, and I think we're going to be talking a little bit about that today, um, we actually can have, we can allow ourselves to have the best time of our lives and be that standard for other people because as they see us, and some of us don't actually see us at all because for many of us, for many of people, for many of them, we become almost invisible because we don't participate in the power games anymore. And that is a good thing about being in this space as well because you become invisible. You, once you let go of having to be recognized by others, having to be acknowledged by others. And that is lovely at times. But when you don't need that energy, you don't feed on that anymore because you, all of your energy stream, all of your well-being comes from deep inside of you, from an inner well. Then you are freed from so much of this, so many of these kind of pressures when you actually have to be, um, you know, acknowledged by others. Because then you really can allow yourself to do what you want to do, what your heart wants you to do, and what brings you joy, what brings you that satisfaction, what makes this life worth living every day in little things and in big things. So I think ah, we've all come here now. So I greet all of those that have just arrived and we greet all of our non-physical friends as well who are here as well and each and every one of you have your own friends that you bring to this this kind of gatherings and feel them allow them to speak with you to touch you to embrace you and also all of our physical friends that will be joining perhaps later watching this later for you too are in this circle and I would I invite you all to perhaps go to the website my website alexissersha.com if you are perhaps inspired to have any private sessions you can choose who you have private sessions with you can have a chat with me Alex or mixed um, you can choose to speak with Mikhail with Yeshua with Saint Germain so it is up to you who you want to have a chat with. And you can have one or perhaps a pack. There are three months journeys, six months journeys. And for, for those long-term journeys, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. You get one-on-one -on -one sessions. And you can go really, really deeply into whatever it is that you bring to the table. 
and when you start, I find that when, when we start this journey with those people that decide to go on that journey, that particular journey, we start at some place, but we end up six months later in a very, very different space, in a very, very different dimension, in a very, very different quality of life. So for a lot of you, and we have some new ones as well today, so I greet you as well. And for, and for those of us that have been on this journey for quite a while, this last lifetime has, for many of us, feels like there has been so many lives within one life. At least for me, it feels like that. And there have been so many changes, so many changes that have prepared us to, to be able to deal with the situations today. So for example, for me, quite a few decades ago, when I was born, we didn't have a TV where I spent summers, um, my summers in the childhood at my paternal grandparents. Um, there, the, the form of transport there were two cows pulling a cart and bicycles. And the, the bus journey of, let's say, 200 kilometers took five, five and a half hours in those days. So it was quite a different time and it was a beautiful time. It had so many beautiful things, so many, as a child, so many magical things. And I was quite free until I went to school to form my own ideas, to, to play, to interact in the forest with, with animals, with friends, with, with all of the things, you know, that were surrounding me. And at the same time, it was a paradigm where I was born in, in Slovenia, in, which used to be part of Yugoslavia. So the only paradigm that I had to choose from was Catholic. And the other one was being a communist atheist. So these were the only thought patterns, the, the ideas, the worldviews that I had to choose from. So from there, uh, and then when I left, you know, when I went through to high school and then I left Slovenia, I hitchhiked to London with my backpack and I had about $100 and that was it. I went into the world and, um, you know, the, everything I had, I carried in my backpack. And from then on, my world has opened up. And not only that has opened up to what was already there. So I've changed the languages. I've changed the cultures. You know, the Berlin Wall fell that year when I left. Um, so there have been many, many, many changes. And when I look back, when we look at those times, when you think, when I think back and I think, wow, those were miracles that happened because some of those old institutions that have fallen almost overnight seem to have been there, seem to have been so strong, seem to have been so powerful, so overpowering. And look at them now, you know, decades later, they are but forgotten. There are grown up people now, adult people that, that have been born after those times. And now not only that we have all of those things that existed, all of the different religions, the Buddhism, the you know, that people have access to, not only that we have that, we have internet, we have maps, we had all sorts of information at our fingertips. We are able to communicate um, with people instantly through video. So the world for, for, for us has changed a lot for those of us that have been around for a few decades at least. Um, and what the reason why I'm saying this is as a reminder that we are able to change, just how much we are able to change, just how much we are able to integrate, just how much each and every one of us has already changed, has let go, has adapted to. So for me, going from, you know, from a small farm that where I spent my summers at, to then in my 30s when I was when I went to university here and I did information technology and being born without even a TV and then perhaps we had I think TV from when I was seven to 14 was black and white with four buttons to now this expansion where you know we are able to communicate in this way so what is in the next decade what are the next two decades what do they have in store for us? 
And this is just a reminder to look back, to acknowledge each and every one of our stories, whatever it is, and to honor that story and to acknowledge and to pat ourselves, each and every one of us can pat ourselves on the back for all of the different things we've experienced, we've let go, we were able to change, we were able to adapt, we were able to go through the, the changes within ourselves to, uh, to, to accommodate all of these new things. And yes, there are many things that that are so called bad, you know, but they are appropriate at this time because it is the time of change. And those who choose, and that includes those in mass consciousness, who choose to continue on earth in a physical be way, will also need to change to come along for this new ride, for the new story, the new story that will not be, have such duality, that will not be in the 3D, that will not need to have the, the light and the darkness in such contrast. So we are creating, we are the pioneers, and we are creating the templates, how to move out of that 3D. So for those people that are coming behind us, it will be much easier because all of the pathways will be there and each, yes, every person's journey is very unique because they create with their own triad, with their own soul, human soul, their eternal self, and how they go about doing it, it is very, very personalized to them. So remind, re, just a reminder as to how far we've gone, how, how, we've, how far we've come, how far we've traveled, and so when, and then there is the next stage where you become more integrated, where you allow the grander part of yourselves, the, the expansion part of yourself. And I mean that part that is outside of the mind, when you allow that part to be more present to all sorts of different degrees, and that keeps changing because it is more fluid. You go through all of these changes within and you become aware that within you all is you, that even though there is some kind of reality outside and you interact with people on the outside, you, you create those patterns that whether you somebody teaches you, you're born into this world, and the society then teaches you certain patterns, certain habits, the worldview, how you're supposed to act in this view, act in this world and that creates you create patterns within you to reflect that worldview so even though we can say well society this society that you come to a place when you realize that within you you have created all of those patterns to reflect what you were taught to reflect what you saw and this is a great freedom initially it's not a good news because you have to, especially when, when the life hasn't worked, when it was painful, when there was suffering, you have to come to terms with this, that it was you who created that when you start taking responsibility for your life. And then you come to the next stage when you realize there is a great freedom in that because if you have created those patterns within you, you can uncreate them, you can melt them, you can break them, you can crush them away. So then for me personally, Alex, um, it feels for me, it feels like underneath, within me, there's this great big ocean or great big lake, it matters not. And out of this, out of that, if you consider that lake, that water energy, out of that, I create patterns to reflect the outside world. And so the things then change. Now I create patterns outside of my own vision, outside of my own interaction with my soul, with my eternal self. So those patterns, those walls, those structures, the world views within me now will reflect much more. And it's not, it's not a, 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 never a complete process, you see, but they reflect much more my own visions and my own visions rather than those copied from the outside of the world and so because then the reality gets created from within 
my own visions then manifest in a physical world for me and for those that I interact with and they want to play with me in this new way, it, it, it manifests outside of me. So that's how we, we create in this creatorship. We are just as a human being, for those of us that have gone and are going through this, this experience, we are just learning how and how this exactly works. So I'm sure that there will be more insights the continual, continual exploration of this. And there is also this um, coming to terms with coming to becoming peaceful with the fact that there is a lot that the mind just will never know. And that becomes from something that, be, that is initially frustrating, it then becomes a real um, exciting thing because you know that your life will always be exciting because there is always more to explore, there is always more to experience. And so these structures and these patterns within, when you realize that it is all coming from me, that I create them, and then I work out how I create them, how this process happens. Because throughout this journey, as you are integrating more and more of your soul self, your eternal self, regardless of what words you use, whether master self, higher self, it, it matters not, but this grander, not greater in value, but um, bigger, huger, vaster, um, this limitless being that you are and you start becoming aware as you keep stepping out of the mind, um, this part of you then teaches you also and in, in your relationship and your interaction with this part, you, 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 you learn, not only learn, but you develop, you become aware of all of these different senses that you have and it's not only physical, but more importantly is the inner senses. And you become acutely aware of your energies inside, of the inner happenings, of the inner beings, and also of all of your friends, the non-physical friends, and all of the stuff that is there outside of the confines of the mind. And the mind, we, we, I myself enjoy my mind because it, it, it is now... It is now part of, the, it has always been part of this journey, but it stepped back from its position as the boss within my life, within my internal world. And it stepped back into its proper, in its suitable position, which is to deal with certain things. It deals with technology, it deals with details of life, or for perhaps it organizes, you see the camera, the speakers, all of these little details. And it's really good with that. And it enjoys being part of that. And it enjoys doing those kind of things. And it enjoys also not having to, to, to lead my life because it, it just didn't have the capacity to do that. I mean, when it tries to, and this is the thing that what happens with the reality, the reality within the mind, the reality within mass consciousness, it closely mimics those of, of the reality when you are integrated with your divine self, with your soul self. You see, it mimics, but it is not quite the same because um, it falls short because the mind is very small. It, uh, it, even though for those people still stuck within the, the, within the mass consciousness, they think that their world is big. You know, they do activities perhaps, they go traveling, perhaps they do all sorts of things. And yet deep down when they stop, and sometimes they don't ever stop, they keep rushing to not notice that they don't have the depth when they are only in the mind, that there is something huge, a huge part of them missing. And yet that too was all part of our experience. So I've gone for quite a bit at this time. So for those of you who are new, before we go into a channel, I would like to also mention that if you're joining this through Zoom, there is a Q&A and you can have any you can write, ask any questions and they will be answered at the end. So now 
I can feel a dear friend Saint Germain in the background. He says, "Go on, go on. Let's let's keep on." He wants to come on and talk. And, and until recently, I have done a channel, a private work, like a workshop with Saint Germain on alchemy. I think a couple of years ago, and that was wonderful. I really enjoyed it, but. It was only in the last, um, let's say, couple of months or maybe a month. Oh, sorry, um, the, the time is now so different, uh, I couldn't say. But just recently that that I, he asked me if I wanted to channel work with him more. It was a surprise to me because I was quite happy working with Yeshua and, and of course, as Mikhail. Um, it, but um, and with Saint Germain, before that, I also was doing private sessions when people, when they had private sessions, requested um, to have a channel with Saint Germain. But I haven't worked with him in this way. So the channeling is quite quite interesting because when I speak as Mikhail, of course, um, he, uh, that being is is my own eternal self. It's quite different than channeling, for example, on behalf of Yeshua and channeling on behalf of Saint Germain, because when my mind speaks for, for another being, it, it initially was very odd because it, it, it's like you have to, I have to speak words and uh, talk about experiences that I haven't experienced myself when I channel, when I speak as Mikhail. There is some kind of familiarity. So even as, as a human self, perhaps I haven't experienced all those things that Mikhail speaks about. Um, but there is a familiarity of the energy. I'm familiar with all of those things. And yet when I speak on behalf of Yeshua, when I speak on behalf of Saint Germain, it, is, uh, it was initially very odd because their experiences are not my experiences and yet they ask my mind to speak as if it was so but I'm used to it now and this process of channeling is so interesting so when I said yes I had to consider the proposition for a few days and then I said yeah, because um, you know there are quite a few things that come up and then I said yes and since then Saint Germain and I have been working even closer and I didn't even realize that that I still had some filters between himself and myself um, that had to be cleared so that our filters also of the past because I've known him from other lifetimes and so the relationship had to become very updated very much in the now and current and without any preconceived ideas without any filters. And a few days ago, I was having a wonderful drive after the walk that I went to and Saint Germain came really, really close and he showed me his heart, his vision, and his, his most gentle heart that he has that I've never experienced before. So it is really beautiful when you allow yourself to blend with non-physical beings in this way. And it is very clean, it is very clear when it is not you know, like in the old days, infested with any viruses, and you share your own um, energy in such a free way, and you blend with your heart, and you share your beautiful, gentle, gentleness, and the visions, and the vulnerability, as friends, of course, and I've started to, I've become to know Saint Germain in a very, very different way, and I'm still kind of sort of integrating that. But he has, he has a real heart. He has a real vision to help those that are on this journey, those that want to experience the integration, the realization. And he has been working really hard. Perhaps it's not the right word for non-physical beings, but with all of his heart. And it goes really well with also with all my vision. And Mikhail has, I've posted a little video about each and every one of the people's vision to sort of look and feel and allow that vision to come for those of you that don't know it yet, to come and, and for, you know, to sort of get to know it. And for those that know, that have the inkling of that vision, to allow it to manifest in your life. Because this is what we came for. And my, I had quite a few dreams a couple of years ago, two, three years ago, when I could really feel 
my, my vision, my soul's desire, my soul's dream. And it was in line have to do with such radical sovereignty, with such radical uh, self-determination, self-reliance that goes so well with this realization. And however, whatever words that I use, that it was, it has to do with the feeling and the feeling of that was so beautiful, so amazing. And it was such a turn on, it was so delicious. And I have been allowing that to become reality more and more. And it never does finish when you have this, this, um, your own visions, when you have your own purpose for this life. It, it just keeps developing into all the different directions and it becomes, you know, it becomes physical, it manifests in physicality and it also, of course, uh, brings you face to face with all of those things that are not in line. And it is those things that very often put people off the track because they think they are too big, those things to deal with for them. But when you allow more and more of this presence of your grander self, you can deal with anything and everything that comes up. And many things are not pleasant. Many things are very intense because as you're becoming more and more alive, you're becoming more and more feeling, you feel everything, you feel all the awful energies when you go, when you feel the mass consciousness is extremely unpleasant. And yet within that, there is such beauty, there is such amazement, there are so many wonderful things that, that can't be explained, that are really hard to explain with words. So I invite each and every one of you to experience, and I invite myself also to experience even more of who each and every one of us are. Oh yes, so here I am, Saint Germain, and I am that I am, and I have been for a long time. And I am here, like Alex said, to help each and every one of you with the realization of who you are, with allowing yourself to bring your vision into this reality. And there are so many little things to do so many experiences, things to experience in this reality that are waiting for you. And I can see you, those that are present now when that will watch this later. I can see you where you are because I don't see your physical body as you would see your physical body with your eyes. But I see your energy. I can read your energy. And I can relate with all of the things that you are going through. And with some, I cannot relate. For I did not stay for a very long time after my realization, although I stayed longer than many of Adam ascended masters. I enjoyed the nature. I enjoyed the simplicity. I enjoyed the beauty because within that, there is such a depth of experience. And you need that time away, as you're all finding out, you need that time away for yourself to recoup, to feel yourself, to allow yourself, to help you create that safe space within you. And that safe space is even more important now than ever. And then you can radiate it out into the world. And you can radiate it out firstly into your world, and then as you touch others. But I digress in this way, for I wanted to speak today to you about the hourglass and perhaps those of non-English non speaking world, you don't know what an hourglass is. It's one of those machines. Well, in my time, before my time, it was used to keep time. You know, when you have that glass, with two bolts and a thing, a, a small neck in between, and it used to, and you turn it around and the sand, with the sand, and the sand flows from the top one into the bottom, and that's how you can measure time. 
But today we're not going to look at that hourglass from the time perspective. We're going to look at it from different realities perspective. So when you are, imagine yourself, if you will, in the top part of this hourglass, you're a grain of sand, perhaps. And you are, in the, and you imagine that, that the whole ball where you are is a particular kind of paradigm, is a particular kind of experience. And it has certain limitations. And all analogies, I remind you, are just that in the analogies, they don't accurately reflect the reality, but they will do. So we, when you are in a certain hourglass at the top, and you are just about to go through the portal, through that thin neck space, and sometimes it feels like you are being squeezed through these small spaces, like you're going through some cave time. And imagine that as being that portal. You go through it as a grain of sand. And all of a sudden you find yourself in the other glass. And imagine, if you will, that this other glass where you are now, your new reality is much, much bigger, much, much grander than the one that you were just in. And yet there is a lot of grain of sand still in the old one. And some of them, let's imagine that they get stuck in there and they never move. Or perhaps they're still getting ready to move. And some of them are in the neck, in that thin neck, going through the portal. So this just so to help you imagine all of the different spaces where people find themselves. Let's imagine that a person is a great, that grain of sand in this hourglass, and you are now in the greater reality. You've gone through that neck, and you are in the, you are in the bigger bulb of this hourglass. And yet just how many grains of sand are still in the other one, in the smaller one? So when we speak about the rules of reality, when we speak about how things work, how things, how things are, there are many truths because depending on where the person is, where the, that grain of sand is. So the, for, those of, for those people that are still in the old bulb, that have not gone through the neck, through the portal, different rules apply. For those that are just in the portal, in that thin part, in the neck part, different rules apply. For those of you who have gone into the new bulb, into the new reality, different rules apply. So this is like an, an easy image, helpful image, to help you to, re to, to be, be, be discerning as to how you speak, as to how you realize. To, to help you realize that you don't have to make anybody understand and you don't have to try to get anybody to understand your new rules, your new reality, because for they cannot. For those grains of sand that are still, that have not gone through the neck, they cannot possibly imagine, they cannot possibly understand what your reality now is. And for them also the rules, different rules apply for them that they do for you. So you see, there are, so it depends, so it, it begs, it asks of you to have this discernment and it also to, 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 to be able to tell where a person is. And it also helps you to come to this peace of mind for yourself so that you don't have to push your own beliefs, your own experiences, your own rules onto others. For that time too will come when they will go through that neck or the hourglass where they will step into the reality. It may be in this lifetime, it may be in another lifetime. It matters not because it is between them and their own soul, between them and their own eternal self. So how do you then live in a in a world which is now filled with so many different kinds of people it is almost like as if there are different species 
and in many, many ways there is, but it is the kind of species that it does not have boundaries as it had in the old days. For in the old reality, if you were born of a certain nation, if you were born of a certain color, height, or anything, you were perhaps classified, and in some countries, it had to do with which family you were born. So you could not move from one to the other. And yet in this new species that we talk about, and yet it can be perhaps a little bit politically incorrect to say there are different species of humanity. And I didn't say some are better, some are worse, even though being non-politically correct, incorrect, or however you want to say it, I can say that some, some species have a much easier time with life, have a much more enjoyable time with life. So back to these species, now people are not stuck now as they were in the old days in these different kind of species. For it is up to their choices as to which species they, they choose to become, they choose to join. And this is always open, the door is always open. But also it requires work, as you know, the same work that each and every one of you have done are doing, the work of integration, of the shadow, all sorts, all of these kind of things. So people are now divided because there have been, and for many of you, you have felt big points of separation just lately, just recently, and they will continue to happen as this difference becomes more and more apparent. And the difference depends on choices that the people make on where they are within their relationship with their own divine self, with their own soul self. So, Unlike in the old days, people are now not stuck within their parameters, but it is up to their choices where they go. And for you, for those of you who have come to the other side, you know that different kind of rules apply. So through this journey, so many things happen, as you know, and sometimes you feel like you're being constricted and sometimes you feel like you expand and you're being constricted again and you expand. It is because you are going through these kind of portals. You go through many, many portals. In this last portal that we've just gone through, well, you have. This last portal was a, the most huge kind, the kind that as a human being, you still don't realize its implications because you are still perhaps thinking that you're playing in the old reality, in the, in the bulb of the old hourglass. But in this new one, new rules apply. In this new place, in this new space that you find yourself, there are completely new rules. There are completely new freedoms. There are completely new abilities for you to discover and discover them you will. And you still, for many of you, you still think that it's the old rules. And because you are the creator of your own reality, so your reality still reflects that. But you will be, each day, you will come to a place where you will see and discover all these new potentials, all these new things that you can now do, all these freedoms that you can now have. And it takes a lot of courage to step into the next freedom and the next freedom and the next freedom. And you experience so, so many things that you experienced and you think, wow, I have got so much loads, truckloads of courage by now. And yet you know that each, each new experience takes, requires all of those courages, all the courage that you have mastered for the next step. Because always, you are at 100%. When you are in this space of being integrated, when you are so fully alive, when you are this sensual feeling being, you are always at the 
because you don't need to keep anything in the store. You don't need to keep yourself back. You don't need to block yourself, but you can keep allowing all of the energies to flow, all of the things to flow for you in this new space. You no longer fear yourself. You no longer fear any of the things because you are no longer your own enemy for the shadow has been integrated. And for those that are still in the neck, in that thin part, we are talking, I am talking about this, so you know what to, what to look forward to. So now this new reality, this new reality has new rules, has new physics, has new ways of being, has new places where your abilities can come to the forefront. And it is imperative that you go, we walk with your heart, that you walk within your sovereign space, that you listen to your own inner voice and walk and take step by step by step. And I don't mean that step by step in the old way, in a linear way, but in a new way when when the next part of your experience gets revealed just before you experience it. And not much, much before, because in this space, in this safe space, you don't need to know the future. You see, in the linear old world, you wanted the future to be revealed. You wanted to know, you, you perhaps went to have your cards read or whatever you listened to all these so-called scientists and experts on tv talk about the next the what the future will bring but you don't need that because now you come from a place you work from a place of safety you work in this now moment in ownership of your own energy in ownership of your own self and in this space you create from this great ocean and that is a beautiful analogy you create your own patterns you create your own experiences and this is what i meant when i said you still don't notice how free you are in this new space and how new the rules of this new reality are because you perhaps still feel that you are perhaps needing to be and to identify as a certain being, as a certain way, as a certain name. But in this reality, you are so free to keep reinventing yourself, to keep creating, to keep melting, to keep creating new story and then letting it go and keep creating new story and then letting it go. And so in this space, there is this vastness of experience that initially can be scary for the human self. And, you, and when I see you touching, exploring with those tentative steps when you're exploring this new reality that is yours, and you try out what works and you try what doesn't work, and you also know just how important it is to always be at the top of the game. But now this top of the game means something quite different than what it used to mean. And so it is that with everything, just as Alex was explaining before, how her and I needed to bring our relationship into this now moment, into the current reality, regardless of what it was before. So, and so too it is with everything else that you need to re-relate, that you need to update, that you need to make current. All of the things, with everything that you interact with, with everything that you play with, to let go of those filters of the old. And how do you exactly let go of those filters? Because most of the time, you're not aware of them until you are. And you let go of those filters by allowing, by allowing more and more and more 
of yourself to be with you, to be as you, to be present in this reality, to keep stepping out of that mind. And for some of you, this experience of being out of mind is fairly new. And for some of you, you're pros at this. You've been doing it for a while. So how do you know that you're outside of your mind? For it is the most important now because you are a creator of your own experience to always be at this top of the game because otherwise you will be creating crap for yourself. You will be creating experiences again that you don't want, that you don't enjoy because now you are responsible for each and every one of your creations. And so it is also imperative that you realize and learn and practice your own acceptance in a way that you uh, forgive yourself for mistakes, for there are no mistakes. For if you do create a crappy day, and crappy days you will have, then you have to learn how to move on to forgive, to move on, to say, okay, I've had a crappy day, so let's see what else I can create. And you will see that as you get much better and better and better at this, as you keep exploring, as you keep living, and yet this new reality will be challenging you on a constant basis. For, as I mentioned before, you are now at 100%. When you interact with your own I am, it asks 100% of you, the human self. It's not happy. It's not satisfied with 99.99%. It wants 100%. So in each and every experience, you will give 100%, whether you are conscious of it or not. But this is the joy. This is the fun. This is that vulnerability. This is the open heart, the allowing, the 100% allowing of who you are. So this paradigm, this new bowl, the part of the hourglass that you are in now, it doesn't even have walls. Not the ones that you as a human self can even feel at this stage. Perhaps one day in the future, and yet for each, each one will create this in their own way, in, in your own unique way, and this is as it should be. For in this new reality, as I mentioned before, new rules apply, and we will keep co and continue to explore those new rules. Because in this reality that you have created, not me, for I am not physical, you are physical, you are the creator in this instance i am just come come here along with your for a ride and i must say what a ride it is for even i and other ascended masters that are with me we too don't know what the future holds we see a lot of different potentials and yet this too is exciting for us because like in the old days when you were boring yes you each and every one of you and the humanity, extremely boring, linear path, step by step in the old way. Ah, oh, we couldn't wait for these times, those of us that worked with you, we couldn't wait for these times for, for to have some excitement. And now here we are. We too are very excited because we watch you. We watch what you do and we are amazed. And yet, would I become physical? No. I'm enjoying too much my own non-physical beingness. And this too is waiting for each and every one of you because as you are now, it's becoming apparent to you, for some of you at least, you can feel into just what potentials, just what possibilities there are. There are no rules in, in the old sense. You don't have to become physical in the old way. Be born go through your childhood, go back to school again. You will not find me going to school again, not into those one of those human schools. 
there are so many info signs that perhaps they want to have that experience, especially the new ones that have never experienced before that before. But for you, for those ones that have done this, for many of you that are present here, that have been here since the beginning of the creation of the physical earth, You've done this so many times. It bores you. The old reality bores you. Admit it. And yes, you still have. Majority of your friends, family, the close ones that are still in the old reality. So you perhaps don't want to be politically incorrect, so I'm going to be. Yes, it is boring, that reality. You don't ever want to experience it again. Even those things that as that human self that was within the mind that you thought was sacred at that time and you thought they were taboo and untouchable subject and you looked at you put them up on a pedestal and you looked at them. Now they've lost any interest for you. Because they were limited, they were boring. And now... So allow yourself, I see some of you still perhaps struggling with this, with being so audacious, with being. Allowing yourself to just be you in this way, to admit what you feel, to allow yourself to feel what you feel, not having to censor things, not having to have taboos that you've picked up along the way that were true once but are not anymore. To allow yourself this freedom to think what you think, to prefer what you prefer, to value what you value. Because in this reality now it is imperative that you do that, that you no longer play those games where you think you're not allowed to think certain thoughts. Because if you do that, then your reality will reflect that. If you want your reality to be you, then you have to allow yourself to be you. You have to allow yourself to feel what you feel. And that whole range of feeling, that whole range of emotions, yes, it is taboo making. And even in the old, bulb in the on the linear way in the mass consciousness this is not talked about and yet it is true that there aren't any innocent people in a sense that that like in how perhaps let's say children or women were in the old ways the supposed to be the carriers of innocence the carriers of naivety, but that is not correct. It was a game only because each and every person that is plugged into the mass consciousness has access to all of the thoughts within that mass consciousness, has access to all of the emotions within that mass consciousness. So when you say, when you used to say, where well, I'm talking about that old reality, or oh, some people just don't know the harshness of the world or you try to protect people from the harshness of that world. It is not possible because perhaps they don't have the physical experience of that harshness. And yet within their mind, they know of it. They know of the suffering. They know because each and every person has access to everything that is within the mass consciousness that is stored there. And what is stored in the mass consciousness are all of the experience, all of the thoughts that happen to people all over the world. So there aren't, in this sense, there aren't any innocent people in this sense. You see, so um, this was just, uh, this was like a... Hmm, wasn't true that some some don't have an access to those kind of things so in this way now i can feel you feeling how the mind works because when you are inside of your mind you don't have that objective view of how the mind works and the mind 
I'm talking about the old way, plugs into that mass consciousness and it's a receiver of those thoughts. And that's why majority of those thoughts that go through, that race through your mind are not yours. They are not created. So nothing much new is created with that within reality. For the mind itself, it's not a creator. It does not create new things. So when you have had in the past the inventions, the new thought, perhaps the renaissance, all of those new things came because some of the people that were part of that mass consciousness have allowed themselves to feel their soul it, their own eternal self, their own higher self, and all of the new things have come from that wellspring, and then they become the part of the mass consciousness. So in this way, but they were not created by the mind. Mind is only the receiver, and yes, mind does focus. So even in the old way, some people would focus more on the positive things, within that mass consciousness, even when they're still in the mind, and other people would focus more on the negative things. And their life then reflected that also. But they didn't create them. They participated and perpetuated, recreated those things. See, the mind does not create. It's not a creator. You are the creator. And you are this grand being. So when, when I say, allow this grand part of yourself to come in, it's not some stranger that comes in, it is you. That you become more of you. And you become more of you and you become more of you. But all of that happens outside of the mind, you see. So then, now what you are doing, when you are bringing this creativity, this inspiration, all of these things, who, who you are, allowing your grander part, all of this now feeds into also, into the mass consciousness and it becomes available then to all of those people that are still stuck in the mind because then when they open themselves up, their mind becomes aware of that, becomes aware of these potentials that you are living. And so, if so, they choose they can become, they can go on to this, they can choose to go on to this journey of exploration. And so in this way, you change the mass consciousness. You make those potentials available to people, to all of the people. For the mass consciousness is not limited by borders, the country's borders. It is all over the world. So each and every person around the world is now able to think thoughts that you have brought into the mass consciousness, inspiring thoughts, wholesome thoughts, well-being thoughts, thoughts of wonder, thoughts of what is possible, thoughts of new potentials, thoughts of inventions, thoughts of clean energy, thoughts of beautiful, clean nature, Thoughts of love, thoughts of working from the heart, thoughts of living from the heart. And so, I, Saint Germain, remind you of this, to celebrate you, to look at yourself with this honor through the eyes of love. For you are changing the paradigm because remember the hourglass, and this is where the analogy is also fitting. The hourglass is still connected, even though you are in the new reality. Or perhaps soon will be if you're still in that neck. It matters not for everyone is on their timeline. You are still in this new reality. You are still connected to the old reality. You are still affecting in more ways than the few of you compared to the whole number of humanity today are having huge, huge, huge changes, are having huge impact on this world. So the world is in the more, much more wholesome and beautiful space. For when you look 
through the eyes of the soul's perspective, your own soul, which gives you an overview. You see just how many people are in this space as you are, just how many people are waking up, just how many people, individuals all, are having all these new thoughts for the first time ever. And some of them for the first time in their whole lineage, ancestral lineage, that will help them to make those changes that will help propel them onto their own journey. And these individuals are all over the world, all different countries and languages and colors. It matters not. For this, these kind of things matter not anymore. For they are understood. Because they are now within that mass consciousness. And for what about for each and every one of you? You keep exploring and we, as we will together, your new space, your new world, your new space dimensions where you are so that you can become familiar, so that you can utilize the freedoms, the capabilities, the senses, or all that is available. And this is not something that you have to get in a second. This is not something that you have to get everything, the wholeness, which this is not entirely correct. You get it. This is how this works. You get everything in the millisecond in the timeless space. And yet then it takes a long, long time to unravel to become aware of, to experience, to practice, to play with. You see, it just keeps unraveling and unraveling and you keep going deeper and you keep experiencing more and you keep having more joys. It is like that childlike innocent in a different way, innocent, childlike, where you love, where you play without abandon, without fears, without holding back. And you explore this new world and there is so much joy. You can hear, I can hear, see you hearing that joyful laughter of that kid, of that free kid that is playing without any thought of tomorrow. So I invite you, Saint Germain, I invite you, I, Saint Germain, invite you to explore this space and we shall explore it together and I'm looking forward to it as well to play with you in this space to see just what kind of worlds we can build and I am glad to interact with each and every one of you in this way I am glad to be working with you in this way for we have much much to do and yet this much to do is exciting it is exciting because just like for you, for me too, it is all new. Okay, so let's see if we have any questions. Okay, we have two questions, it looks like. Hello, I sent an email question. If you can answer, thank you. If not possible, no worries. Okay, I don't have access. Um, we'll have a look perhaps you can have a look if you do uh, for the future if you do have email questions um, please if you can send them um, a, by an hour before the show because then I can have a look at them and read them and copy and paste them and, and, and answer them at the end okay so we've got dear Alex and Saint Germain I took quite a few old thought patterns into the lower bowl of the hourglass how I best open my eyes to my new reality. I wish there would be a handbook of creation laughs. Please share your wisdom. Many thanks. And dear friend, dear, dear, dear friend, I have known you for many lifetimes and I greet you just like this. You are already doing, you see, you are already living in many ways and in many ways you don't realize that you are 
And yes, I have mentioned that, that for many of you, and this is something very normal in this new bowl of the hourglass, you still continue sometimes the old patterns, like the old thoughts, the old habits, because you don't realize just how different this reality is. You see, this reality is not forcing you to change because you could, you could, easily if you wanted to not that you wanted to but you could easily play the 3d reality if you chose to and then the world would reflect that to you for you are the creator you are the creator of your own patterns you are the creator of your own energy uh, what i mean is that you create with your own energy in your own energy field so if you want to keep continue those old patterns, you absolutely can. So the best, so those practices that help you get out of those old thoughts. And remember those old thoughts about something you picked up from the mass consciousness. They are not your thoughts. They are just something that your mind is tuned to. The patterns have been set, those routes. And it just keeps going round and round with the same thoughts. So how do you step out? You just step out. You don't fight with them. You acknowledge them and you step out. You step into your feeling body. You step into your body. You feel your body. You, you become present. You take a few deep breaths and you notice everything that is around you. You notice how your body feels in this now moment. You notice all of the things that you can notice, the sounds, the sense, I would suggest that you close your eyes because then you will become more in touch. It's easier to get in touch with your presence in that way. And you feel, feel that gentle presence of your grander self, that immense presence. And you step into it and you fall into it and it catches you and it hugs you and it holds you and it plays with you. And it is so pleasurable to be in that space that you continue want more and more and more. And this is why you are here. This is why you ask these questions because you know there is more. Otherwise you would not ask this question and you're absolutely in the right place. And you keep stepping out and you keep experiencing. And I thank you for allowing me to connect with you in this way. For we too have much to do together. Thank you. Okay, so let's see if we have any more questions. Oh, yep, we do. Okay. When you speak of exploring this new world, are you talking about the physical world or through the imagination or through some other way? Or I speak of all. You see, the physical world is you are not separated from the physical world. You are intimately connected with your physical world. You are when you one day when you when you are have that great objective view from the grander self, the point of view, you will see that you are your physical world. There is no separation. Those separations were and are part of the linear world, part of the old bulb in the hourglass, part of the old world, where you thought of yourself as mind, that you are just the mind, and everything that you touch, everything that you feel, everything that you look around, you with your eyes or here, is the other. So that veil is no longer there unless you want it to be. You see, if you have gone through that neck of the hourglass into through that portal, that veil is gone. And the reason why you need to go through that portal is not because it is some physical thing, some physical barrier, but it is because within yourself, the portal, that veil has melted. You see, that veil is not in the outside world. That veil, that border is inside of you. You are holding that wall up. You have created, you have built that wall from your beliefs. Because you believe the beliefs, the old beliefs said 
there is this world and then there is the other world the, the old belief said and these are bricks in that wall of your veil the beliefs are the bricks out of which you have constructed the reality which was separated and that separation was between the physical between you between the inner world between outer world between this world the physical world and the world that you call after death world you see but when you deconstruct that wall and there are many many things many many um, books many things many practices that you can participate in that will help you to de to become aware of to become aware of yourself as that builder of that wall to become aware of the wall and then also to learn how to deconstruct that wall you see as you are allowing more and more of your grander self all of these things become apparent. You become aware of all of these things. So no, there are no physical, um, let me read your question again. When you speak of exploring this, are you talking about the physical world or through the imagination? Yes, there is no difference between your imagination and the physical world. Because as a creator, first, before there is physical, there are ideas. There are patterns, there is energy within which you create this. So I would invite you to keep exploring, to keep doing what you're doing because it has brought you here into this group and into other places that will assist you in, in becoming aware of this. So how? what are the first things that you need to do is to, to, to take some time with yourself and become still to take some time perhaps in nature is the best or if you don't have access to that perhaps put your headphones on with a beautiful music that you enjoy and take that time every day just to be and give that intention make that choice i want to feel the presence of my grander self of my higher self of my soul self and it is once you start allowing and feeling that presence, that then the inspirations, the imaginations, the pathway becomes open, the pathway becomes known and visible to you. And then you take that next step because the clarity comes with the presence and you take the next step that will assist you in becoming more aware and becoming more aware and becoming more aware and with more awareness there is more clarity there are more potentials there is more knowledge knowingness inner knowingness is what you need to do and there are many people that will come to you with that can assist you many books many articles many things so it is a wonderful journey of this exploration and it and as it is exploration of the inner self so it is the exploration of the physical world because the two are not separated that separation is an illusion of the old world thank you could you please speak about my relationship with sound and what can i do to unblock this and let it flow freely into my life again i'm ready and still feel this pain and struggle when i want to start yes the sound, it is like with all other things. I invite you to stay with that pain and the struggle because it is within that pain and the struggle that the pathway through will be revealed to you. You see, so how does it physically, how do you experience that going through that portal, that narrowness? of the wall of, of the corridor perhaps where you sometimes feel squeezed it is very often that in that space you feel the suffering the pain all of those things that you have tried to push away you see in this new way and to get to this new way to get into this bowl you go through it you don't escape for it was the escape, trying to escape from it, that has been the problem 
So like with everything, including with this, with your music, you stay, you choose. Yes, I'm going to look. I'm going to feel, I'm going to be, I'm going to accept all of those feelings, all of those emotions that are connected with that. You see, because all of these things come as a whole package. They have a solution within them. Everything has a solution within them if you but follow its trail. And how do you follow its trail? You stay with those sufferings, you stay with those feelings and you allow them to flow through you and you don't identify with them anymore for they will bring you memories. For some of you, it brings you pictures as they're integrating feelings, even sense you, that you can feel as they go through you and don't identify them, don't stop them, but allow them to flow through you because then they go into neutral and become available to you as a clean energy again for you to build something new and they are accepted but yes you intensely feel them intensely feel the suffering the separation and all of the feelings you see in this journey you don't hide from so-called difficult feelings they are very much part of you and yet with the presence, when you invite the presence of your soul, it is your soul, your grand, grand self, grander self that deals with those things. Not You don't have to deal with them as a human self. As a human, you just create space. You create a safe space. You make a choice and you allow all that wants to be known to you, that wants to flow through you, to flow through you, regardless of how painful it is. And that's what releases it. You will see that when you work in this way, this pain is not going to leave any lasting effect. It doesn't wound. It doesn't create more pain for you. It creates release. It creates freedom. It creates joy. It creates more love. It creates respect for you. And then you see where it will take you and accept all of the things that it will take you to. For you, it may be that the, your journey with the sound is complete. You may want to start something new. But when you are in that space of acceptance, you change, you do things because it is time, because you feel complete, not out of any pushing not out of any forcing, not out of any um, old discipline in the old way when you're trying to suppress yourself, when you're trying to make yourself be something that you no longer are. For anything you see in this new way, whatever you choose to do, whatever comes up, and there are so many talents, so many potentials, so many things that you can do, that you had no idea at the moment you still don't have any idea and that is the fun part because you keep exploring yourself and you keep discovering all these new things that are joyful that are just as joyful you see so perhaps music and this is absolutely up to you because the solution a resolution is within so it's up to you whether you will continue with music or whether you will take on something else or whether you will give yourself a break or whether you will try whatever you try whatever you do whatever you choose will be enjoyable will be satisfaction will bring you excitement and passion but yes it does require all the courage to experience to integrate all of the feelings all of the emotions, all of the sufferings of the old. Thank you. Okay, let's see if we have any more questions. Hello, Alex and Saint Germain. I would ask you to share with me some hugs. Thank you, dear one. I will hug you and I'm hugging you and allow yourself to feel my hug. And you can ask me to hug you and allow myself to hug you in a very clean way, as a friend, as a, with heart to heart, one vulnerable heart to another. 
at any time that you need for at any time that you want my support that you want to chat with me i will be with you thank you okay so now let's see if we have any more questions or i might see if i can go into the email and see the question okay okay so i do have an email question but it is quite long so please keep the questions um short i will answer that email privately um so for, for the show keep please keep the questions fairly short um so that we can we can answer them here live so i think that is all of our questions for today and it has been from all of us from alex my team and everyone it has been wonderful to 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 play with you in this way and also i have uh, didn't mention before that i have been um that i have been using a software that i'm trying out um during this show that will actually uh, record it record the show in the text so i can make that hopefully available for those of you that perhaps want to translate it um, because text can be easily translated to another language that can be more understandable uh, but uh, i hope that i'm not sure how yet it works and i hope that it's pretty accurate and um, that will just give um, more clarity to the shows and will will enable those that perhaps um, you know english is not one of their second or third language even and you can translate it but you can translate it in your own language uh, to help with clarity and understanding so thank you each and every one of you and until next time thank you bye bye